Stephen Wiltshire from London is a star among savants. His nickname is The Living Camera. Stephen is autistic. He lives in a world of his own. Communication is difficult for him. He didn't speak his first words, pencil and paper, until he was five. Yet when he was 11, he drew a perfect aerial view of London after only one helicopter ride. Even the number of windows in all the major buildings in his drawing was correct. For this film, we're testing the living camera in Rome. Stephen has never seen the Eternal City from above before. After only a 45-minute helicopter flight, we'll ask him to draw a five-and-a-half-yard panoramic picture of the historic city center without having a second glance at it. Stephen has three days. In these three days, Stephen will have to keep thousands of details in his head. The innumerable coppolas, the tiny winding streets, all the balconies and windows of the endless array of houses, and each and every column and window arch of Rome's major sites, from the Pantheon to St. Peter's to the Colosseum. Five and a half yards of paper can look scarily empty. The, the amazing thing, Stephen starts the drawing as we would, with the Church of St. Peter's. But he doesn't do any sketches, nor roughing out of the space for the drawing. It's as if the panorama already existed within his head, with all the proportions, all the roads, all the details. At the end of the second day, Stephen is a good halfway through his creation. After three days of his drawing marathon, even Stephen Wiltshire starts to tire. He has filled in more than five yards of paper in fine pencil. He has been restlessly aligning window to window and house to house, because Stephen loves to be applauded for his art. In the left corner, he's finally reached the ruins of the Forum Romanum. Stephen's sister Annette is rejoicing with him. He's made it. Obviously, he's pleased with his work. Yet our vexing question still remains. How precise was Stephen's ability to memorize? Is it really true that you could only see a single curve of the Tiber from above? We started to compare the accuracy of the drawing with the real thing. Is Stephen's version of St. Peter's Cupola too dominant? Yet here again, like with the curve of the Tiber, Stephen is frighteningly right. We wondered if the famous Roman hill should probably stand out more in Stephen's panorama. But again, Stephen had seen it better. From a thousand feet up, the hills are, optically, almost level. Checking the Pantheon, we did discover some minor inaccuracies on the roof. But the number of columns of the portal is, again, absolutely correct. And, despite our doubts, Stephen has drawn one of the most complex buildings, the Colosseum, so precisely it's practically a blueprint of reality. Stephen was also accurate in the instances we checked of nameless buildings and side streets. Had he had more time, his sister Annette believes, he would have put in even more detail. Some, some of the areas of all the, the part, some lots of detail, remember things and of the some of the cities and the neighborhoods and the villages. And then the, um, 
the easy part is uh, St. Peter's and um, Forum and uh, Colosseum and mem memorize it by head and that, and by memory.